Welcome back. I'm Sherry with Ratchet Up Your Art, where we take the ordinary to the extraordinary and provide a different perspective along the way. And today, I'm going to be jelly printing with this item. What could this item be? Well, keep watching while we ratchet up your art and jelly print with this mystery item. Okay, guys, I have something really exciting to show you. And you're going to wonder, what's it got to do with jelly printing? But my friend Elizabeth over on UEB Study Group sent me over some Braille pages. And this here is a Braille. You can feel it. It is a dinosaur. And then these are the words. And she sent me a little, um, little note here. She sent me a bunch of stuff, guys. You have to check out her channel. Today, we're going to do some jelly printing on the braille paper she sent me thermoform paper this paper here is is like a plastic there's a machine that you can put items on like this necklace here you can put items on it and then it um, forms the plastic over the item so that way people who are blind or have poor eyesight um, can feel what the image is so that they could feel that this is like a, a necklace. And so we're going to use this today on our jelly plate. And I have to tell you, I'm really excited and I'm such a nerd, I guess. She sent me the Braille alphabet. It's hard to see. She sent me the Braille alphabet that you can get from the Library of Congress and it tells you how to write in braille so you could create your own braille cards if you wanted to and so i'm going to show you she sent me this stylus hey guys i'm just geeking out over this she made my day when she sent this to me she sent me a stylus and each one of these is a braille sale and so you use this stylus and you poke holes per the alphabet into your paper and there's there's a braille typewriter and there's a whole world of braille that i wasn't even aware of so go check out elizabeth's channel over on ueb group uh, study group i will have a link below in the description and i'm going to use this feel this this right here think of that texture on to the jelly plate so Keep watching because we are going to um, make some jelly prints with this and on our braille paper. The paints that I use for this video are the Dilution paints, the Tim Holtz paints, and the Dina Wakely paints, as well as my basic acrylic paints by Liquitex and some golden acrylics. So there's a variety of paints I use in this project. Here, I'm just using the thermofoam paper, create my initial print and going over each of these items very carefully to make sure that I get those images transferred onto the plate. And here's my initial image. I got a really interesting ghost print. So let's see what I have when I pull this piece of paper here. This is just regular Nina classic cardstock. That is pretty interesting. It looks like typography. So here I decided to go ahead and try some golden paint. And the thermofoam paper again. And as you can see, I have several ghost images on this plate now. But what I decided to do was use the braille paper and put it on my um, palette to see if I can um, pull up any paint and see what that would look like on the actual braille paper itself while the thermofoam ghost prints are drying. So I'd go back and try to get some more of that paint up. Well, that was an interesting effect. But what I also noticed was some, some ghost images left on the palette as well. And so that's going to be an interesting pool. And these peaks and valleys that were left on the plate. So here's the thermofoam paper. 
after it's been cleaned. I just wiped it cleaned with water and got the paint off and then I also used some hand sanitizer. So the thermofoam paper can be cleaned with hand sanitizer and water. Now I'm going to try some Sedina Wakely paint on here, yellow, and see if I can get a pull from either the ghost images that are left on the gel plates. Now I'm rubbing really um, securely on here and hard because I want to try to get up as much paint as I can and get a clean plate. And it looks like I have a pretty clean plate. That is pretty cool. That That's like a, again, it reminds me of topography, but the images are definitely there. Now let's see what we can pull from this uh, palette that I had. Should be some ghost image of braille paper, but I don't know. We'll see when we find out. Oh, look at that. Oh, now that's cool. That is a cool print right there. That has some cool, cool ghost images. That is cool. Now I'm just feeling it because it felt like the paint was a little raised from there, but it was very um, interesting. So now I'm going to go ahead and try some dilution paint. And I'm taking a whole sheet of braille paper and I'm just going to rub it onto the uh, gel plate. I thought I'd take another sheet and clean off the palette. Now these braille books um, are very large. They're like 11 by 11 almost. I'll have to measure it. Now look at that interesting effect between the braille. It's got like these peaks and valleys. So it kind of reminds me again of topography. You know, you're looking down on the rivers and the valleys. So, um, of land masses. So let's see what we got here. A lot of rivers and valleys. And I think that has to do with the, the sails of the braille because they're so close together that it's almost like an, an embossed image. Now I'm going to take some more golden paint. I really like the golden paint. I've been playing around with different paints to see which ones I like better. I do like the golden and this is one of my favorite colors. I'm almost out of it. Okay, so here's the dinosaur braille paper that I'm using. And I can't wait to see what this turns out because this is a whole braille image of a dinosaur. As you can see, there is a ghost image left behind. But here's this ghost image. Here's how the braille of the dinosaur turned out. It didn't get all the paint in between, and I like it. It's It really makes the dinosaur braille image pop. So I decided to try something a little different and, and pull out some metallic paint and see if see what the metallic paint would do against this ghost image of this brailed dinosaur. And I'm hoping this image pulls really well um, because I would like to to turn it into a card or even the dinosaur that I did prior that's all braille I'd like to turn that into a card so uh, make sure you subscribe to my channel so you'll be notified of when that video is available but let's see what this dinosaur does I'm curious oh check that out you could see the ghost image of the dinosaur that the braille dinosaur left behind that's pretty cool Now I decide to use a stencil and use the braille again. And I'm rubbing really hard inside each of those circles. So the technique that I'm trying of rubbing the braille dots through the larger stencil didn't quite work out the way I intended. So I'm going to have to try this technique again. I decided to go ahead and pull print from the 8x10 palette and this is what I ended up with and this 
is a really cool print. I like the gold onto the blue. I'm really digging the ghost images from these braille papers. I use some um, Liquitex paint here. I'm putting down the image again, taking the paper. Now I'm gonna pull this stencil and I decide to use some Liquitex acrylic. I like this color, this is a cool color. And I'm going to, and even though I put it on my jelly plate over here, I'm, and not on the palette, I'm gonna go ahead and, and just brayer it, ghost image. And as you can see, I have a spots. And we talked about a blotchy print in my first video. So if you haven't seen that video, go check out the video. I'll put an end card here about blotchy prints. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pull this image and I'm hoping that the stencil technique worked with the braille paper because if it did, that will be an interesting effect. And now I'm pulling this. Oh, I like these colors. This turned out really cool. Oh, check out the ghost image that we got. The paper's a little wet here. So at the end of the video, I will have a close up, but check out those ghost braille dots. Those are really cool. I decide to use the stylus. This is a stylus. This is how you make or write in braille. Each one of these things has a, it's called a braille sail. So I'm just using the stylus to make my marks by using the back of the stylus onto the gel plate. Here, I'm just opening the stylus and then I'm going to make a different print using the openings of the braille cell. I'm trying to use it like a stencil by using my tissue paper to get in between those um, cells. But it really didn't work. The stylus seemed to create its own image without the tissue paper. So I kind of gave up on the tissue paper. And then I decided to take a white and to see if I can pull that print. But I decided to use the back side of braille paper. So let's see how this turned. Oh my, when I use the back side of that braille paper that has been debossed, it left all these dots onto my gel plate, which will create an interesting ghost image. So the paint didn't go into the debossed part of the braille paper. I decided to use the stylus again to see if I can create another interesting pattern. And don't worry about the stylus. I was able to wipe it off with a baby wipe. I'm just letting the larger gel plate here dry, dry a little bit so that I can pull that image and, th and playing around with the palette. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull the palette. I didn't have enough paint on my plate, so it didn't pull like a full sheet. So I'll have to put some more paint on the palette to try to pull up the rest of that image. Oh, this was a better pull. See how clean my palette is? And then you see that texture right there? That's from the stylus right there. And then I have some ghost image prints. It's from the papers as well, from the braille. So that was a pretty interesting print that we could use for something later down the road. This print here, it's drying. I'm going to add a darker color. Now this is just a craft paint. It's one of my favorite paints to do a cleanup with. And I'm just going to uh, use this darker color to pull this print. OMG, check out that print. That is amazing. That was really cool. We'll have a recap at the end of this video and I'll give you a, a closer look at this print that we just pulled. So here I'm just gonna go back with some golden acrylics and clean up my palettes 
and take one last pull to see if I get anything interesting before I go over all the prints we did in this video. So keep watching so you can get a better close up of all the pulls. Here's this print, and I really like this cleanup print. This was another good print as well. So just to recap on all our gel prints, I use a thermofoam paper as like a stencil or a mask, if you will. Um, so I got the impression of the necklace and uh, the words. So this is the positive side. And so that you can create an impression on. What I didn't show was you could use the negative deboss, if you will, onto your jelly print to get a different perspective of how that would look. Now this, I will definitely be using this as like a stencil and um, will be, or in my stencil stash to create textures from. I really liked um, how this turned out. And I just washed this with hand sanitizer and soap. Um, most likely I won't be washing this in the future. So we'll see how that turns out to create textures with. And this is the prints from those. So you, as you can see, um, it, when I use the more fluid paint, if you will, um, you can't really make out the textures as much. You can tell that this is part of the necklace, but the more fluid paint creates a different, like a snow flake effect on this. And so it's really hard. It's really hard to make out the image. Whereas this one has more of, it's got some of the fluid paint, but it's got some of the acrylic uh, heavy body paints. And so you can make out more of the writing. You can make out more of the um, necklace pieces because I printed this twice in the circle. So, um, and even this little bracelet here, um, you can make that out more with more fluid. So if you're gonna use um, Braille, uh, to jelly print with, use more of a heavy body acrylic uh, type paints um, like these versus more of your fluid paints um, because they will beat up. They will beat, this is actually the paint, they will beat up on your gel plate and so because they're fluid. So then you don't really see the image as crisp as you do on this one. Now, again, the, um, these were just regular pulls. And what I found interesting was, is because there's a lot of uh, braille right here, a lot of peaks and valleys, it created these little, um, these little ridges here in the paint, which is a unique and different um, effect. This is a ghost print of one of the braille uh, papers onto the plate. And so, um, as a person who doesn't really work with Braille a lot, I think that this is a unique texture that you can add to your uh, gel prints. However, those that can read Braille, like my friend Elizabeth, she can read Braille, you may want to get the uh, Library of Congress Braille alphabet to make sure that your words are in the um, correct position and not upside down. Because for example, this this one right here, I think that's the letter Q because of the um, five dots and in the order in which they're in, they match they match this one, this uh, Q. So those look kind of similar. But Elizabeth will let me know if that wasn't a Q or not. Um, but it sure looks like one to me, but I'll leave it up to the experts. This looks like an L. Right there, that looks like an L because of the three dots that go down. So, um, I had a lot of fun with this. I really like the textures that the Braille leaves behind. Here's another ghost print. And the pattern, the pattern that it creates, I mean, these are words and they create pattern on the gel plate. And then of course I use the other thermofoam paper um, that's right here as well. So it's a double print. Now here's an example of fluid acrylic onto the brow paper. Again, um, 
it kind of distorts it a little bit. It makes it hard to, to bring out some of the, the textures that the braille piece. Now, this one's okay because you got a combination of where you can where you can see the picture and then where you can't see it so much. So this one I would say is okay, but it does create an interesting effect. Now, this is the dinosaur print. So this is the actual dinosaur paper. And we printed this onto the gel plate. And um, I really like how the white um, didn't go in between all the gel, I mean, all the uh, braille um, cells here. But what I thought was really cool was the ghost print from that. So there's a ghost print of that dinosaur. So that was really awesome. Now this one here is the um is another braille piece but again it shows you the uniqueness of these um it looks like if you look at a topography map it looks like the rivers and the valleys if you will um with what the ink uh the paint left behind so i found that interesting i kind of like that effect if you will now there's a couple more things that i tried when I was doing this is I tried the back side of paper. It's almost like, you know, when you're at Disney World, the back side of water. Well, this is like the back side of paper. So I gel printed the back side of the uh, paper onto the gel plate. So it's actually like this on the gel plate. Now, one thing I did play around with and that you can't really see it here and I'll show you on another one is the, um, the stylus. You can kind of see it, but not really is the stylus. Um, so I'll show you that. But the interesting thing about the back side of paper, this was the outcome. Look at that. Isn't that awesome? Like these dots. That's from the back side of the braille paper. And then of course we got some of the stencil. I'll show you that in a minute. Some of the stencil. And then we have some of the stylus in there. See that? That's from the actual stylus. Even though I used this, I washed it off. So the paint comes off of here. I didn't destroy it, but this is a brand new tool. I'm excited in my arsenal. And I just really like this braille paper work to the point where I don't want to use all my gel prints unless, or my braille paper unless I have something in mind because I just love the look at this. This is just so awesome. And then it has a little bit of a texture to it when you feel it. You can feel the where the dots um they're not they're kind of raised but not it's like the paint is is what's making them raised because the paint didn't go into the paint didn't go into the back side of the paper. So it, it's a unique, interesting effect. And then this one is where I use the stylus. So you can see the stylus made these interesting marks. And these are the, um, the braille cells right here. So I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, you can kind of see them right there. And then this is the back side. Uh, this is the open part of the braille cell. And then um, this is the back side of the braille cell. Okay, because of this neat, that's like a texture. Now, what I thought was interesting is using the braille paper through stencils. So if you haven't checked out my video on um, how to use stencils, um, I just did a one layer stencil here, did the braille through the stencil. So in my video on stencils, if you have big open areas, then you can take smaller stencils or in this case, smaller, you know, the braille dots, and you could push them through the stencils to create a unique effect. This is another uh, ghost image print. And I think that turned out really well. Also. This is a no, another ghost image print just really like those ghost image prints. Now this one was very interesting. Look at the peaks and valleys, you know, going back to the topography for a minute. Look at that. It looks like lakes and, and rivers, if you will, that sprout off from the lakes right there because of all the cells that were in there. But then you get the fluid effect. See this, these little, um, 
these little snowflakes. That's the fluid paint effect. And then you get the ghost image on top of that. So this turned out like a really interesting um, piece. It might not be that pretty, but the textures in this is really interesting. Again, check out my friend Elizabeth on UEB study group. You'll learn all different kinds of things with Braille. Check out um, her, her uh, video on stylus and how to use it. Um, I am just so grateful that she sent me these these um, braille papers to play with to the point where now I don't I don't dare use them I'm kind of like hoarding them because I don't know if I could get braille books and braille paper um, anymore from her but I have to tell you guys on the jelly print that was awesome they they create unique textures and if I can figure out how to use the stylus I mean it looks pretty simple but if I can um, figure out how to use the stylus i'm gonna be adding braille to my cards i think that that would be so cool and a unique texture and so it may be creating some future cards with braille underneath the words if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up and if you have not already subscribed please consider doing so it would really make my day thank you for watching ratchet up your art